right, so welcome back. Um, unfortunately, the video footage for the Gas Lamp Alley Victorian Sci-Fi Street Wagon, uh, the uh, ledge type Gypsy Caravan, it, it, it got corrupted. So unfortunately, I won't be able to show you that 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 um, build in review because I decided to go ahead and convert it to the thing I want to use it for. However, I learned a lot from it. I'm here to help you make any kind of uh, uh, rounded and non-flat top on uh, your wagon you buy from Sirs of Precision, who I also love because due to the fact that they have these things so cheaply priced, it allows you to push the boundaries of your imagination and allows you to take risks you wouldn't normally take with other models. So peel this off. It's just their little uh, sample guide. You know, the rest of their buildings on there. And now this is the... Uh, let's see, what was it called again? The Bow Top Gypsy Caravan, or a Bow Top Vardo, as some may know it as, in other circles. Now, this um, caravan and the Square Top Caravan, or Ledge, are both going to have this kind of soft, bendy material. Folks, these are your stairs and your roof. Now, the first thing you got to do make sure you have a super thick super glue thin super glue will get soaked up by this material so do not even try it it's going to run it's not going to stick and it's going to soak right in to this light um absor absorbing material so don't do it just find a nice thick super glue i use max secure i buy this this particular brand at hobby town uh they order from someone else and they put their own labels on it but Find a extra thick or super thick super glue. It'll save you a lot of heartache. Secondly, keep the bottom portion, the deck, and the the um, top in separate pieces. Don't glue them together. You're going to want to have the ability to pull those apart. So, say um, with my ledge top which I converted it's, it's gonna look messy because this is gonna be a uh, necromancer bunker pretty much but I have it where I can pull it apart you're gonna want to do that and this is that that material I did on there I don't want, I want to put holes in the roof and all that so why it looks all well, janky because well it's gonna be you know a necromancer inside of it but keep the wagon part the bottom part and the top part as separate it'll save you a lot of heartache now secondly this kit is going to shell out little extra pieces like this. this. This comes from the window here. It kind of pops right out. Save these. You get free squares and circles and little rectangles made of MDM board for free. And if you like converting stuff, well, keep the damn things. You can use them for, for, for all kinds of fun stuff. I got a whole whole drawer of these things. This is full of these little squares, and I like to have them just for having these for bases. Secondly, or thirdly, fourthly, fifthly, whatever, whatever this current number is on, push these out gently. Um, I use my fingers, but if you want, you can use um, a pin like this or something else of that nature. It'll help you more carefully push these out because if these break, they're not going to fit correctly. There's a lot of small pieces here that could easily break, and even more so on on the ledge type because um, its its topper has a little ledge on it um, that is like that thin. So if you push it out wrong, psh, it's going to snap. Second thing, the third thing goes for the uh, the spokes here. Because these spokes are also pretty thin and they will snap too. Additionally, they give you these cool little triangles here, which you can use for all kinds of fun stuff. So keep your trash shapes. Don't throw them out. You're going to want these eventually. Anyone who's in the game knows you keep the extra pieces in case you want to make something later on. So I'm going to go ahead and pop all these out and have them all laid out here in a second. All right, so I got everything laid out in a way to where I can explain it. And I'm going to... And I lay everything out in a way you can. This is what what goes with what right here. I lay it out in groups that all correlate to each other. So look off of this and realize that all these things go together in a sequence. That this group goes here, this group goes here, this group goes here. Plan out your attack with this model. You may be a first time model, you may not be, but I'm gonna try and help you out and give you a few you know a, a few, few tips along the way. Also, here's the pile of free shapes you get. You know how many times I've suffered. To figure out where I get to get a free perfect circle, you get one for free. This could be a cheese wheel, or anything you want it to be. You know, this is this is a free circle. You get free triangles, free rectangles. 
keep these. Don't throw them away. Don't be a dummy. So the first thing what you're going to want to do is, at least what I want to do is, I want to get this bow top on top of um, the, the the main caravan parts. And it's going to bend. It's going to bend in a circle pattern all the way around. So take it slowly. Don't tear this. You know, it's 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 very soft, very terrible. Give it just give it a good solid flex. Just flex around, get it loosed up. They're all kind of mildly serrated on the edges there, as you can see. So just go along and give it a nice little bend. Get it warmed up. You know, make make sure there's no tears in it. Because if it tears here, when you're gonna bend it. The thing's gonna tear right up. And just get and just get it loosened up. Just just work it through. And it'll make, it'll save you a lot of suffering. That I wish I had known doing that, the, even the slight bend on the ledge top. So just take your fingers, roll them around, get that wood worked up, get those creases working, and then we'll work on getting it put on the actual main caravan part, this here. Because unlike the ledge type, there's no flat point to press them onto. It's going to be all the way around, glue along the edges, and then hold them in place. So I'm going to put this roof onto this caravan piece. I'll be right back with you guys as soon as I get that done. I just realized while I was looking at it, if you got something round, like a toothpick holder or, or a glass, take your bow top and roll around just like that. It'll help support it and it won't make it, it'll, it'll help stop that crease in the middle from peaking. So it's going to be fitting like that on top of these. So if you got something, something round, take advantage of it. You know, uh, whatever you can, like a, a shot glass, anything, just to help get that those, these things stretched out. So I'm a little, little, little bit through here. And I'm going to show you guys what I did here. You're going to put glue all along the inside edge here. It's going to split out uh, on top of it. Not the actual edge, but on the black part of the edge. Uh, as a little bit of help yourself, take a bit of a knife and scrape down the, the edges right here. See those little white marks? Make those go away and they'll go on a lot easier. And just take, so you hold, you're going to pinch on both sides like this, keep it in place, and then take your fingers and slowly press down along the edge here. Get the, make sure that glue gets worked up in there and gets that hold going. Cause it's gonna be a little while, even though it's super glue, it's thick super glue. It's gonna be a little, little bit slower to to to, to dry, but it's gonna have a much firmer hold on it. It's not gonna run away. So just keep pinching it and keep rolling it around with your fingers. Okay, so we got a pretty good hold on this. It's gonna be a little bit of flex here on the inside, but basically this is kind of the shape you're going for that nice rounded bow top shape. And even still, I'm going around and I'm pressing on the edges here, make sure that glue's got a nice good hold on there. So I've gone ahead and I've done the other edge as well. I got that nice bow top going. And you can see how that that bow is really important to the whole design of this. And even now, I'm still kind of pinching the sides every once in a while and rolling my fingers, making sure that glue's got a good solid hold on those edges. Because I'm worried about this thing going poof when it's popping up, <laughs> you know, and making a run for it. But the key is to be patient and take your time. You got you know, this is going to flex out a little bit, which I, which I think is just because you got two edges on here and it's just gonna, they're going to want to bow out. But just take your time on, on, on this top here, roll it around. Even that, still got a little bit of a gap there, man. But take your time, roll it around, make sure you got a good shape. And that'll be, and this be, this be your, the entirety of, of your top piece as well. This is assuming your top part. So we're going to move on to, by the way, this is a stove. In case you're curious, this is the stove sticking out. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the bottom part, and I'll see you all here in another second. So. When you get your, your boards here, I went in and glued on the um, the runners here. I'm not sure what they're actually called on here. Let's see. They're actually called the support frames, running gear support frames. So I went in and glued those onto here. And you're going to want to put glue on the little sockets here for the running boards so they can press against. And I put a little bit more glue on, on top of the rails right here so it kind of fit right on there. And it fits pretty flush. And you'll know if it's crooked or not because it won't be square in the ends. So once you have those done, you let them dry. You let them dry. Like, don't go and throwing stuff on there. Let them dry. And then you can move on to the side panels onto um, the board itself. Now, these boards are going to want to pinch inwards on you. So do one at a time and hold it on the bottom and make sure it stays square with the frame. It's going to want to do this. Don't let it do that. It's going to make putting the top on really, really hard on and off. You set her down, make sure they're square, and you got to hold her in place until she's dry. It's going to take a little while, but it'll be a better result in the end, and be happy with yourself for not rushing ahead. So just hold that sucker in place and wait till it dries. Next, you put on the other 
uh, side here and do the exact same thing. Hold it square. Don't let it pinch in on you. And avoid having your thumb putting pressure on this side while you're doing this. That way this won't pre-dry hold in that direction. So just hold this still. Hold it so it's square. Wait till it dries, and then we can move on to the stove, seats, the axle over there, and all the other fun stuff that comes after this. So now we got the base layers all done. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like a sled almost. You got your sled, you got, make sure your sides are all squared up still. Save you a lot of headache. And then we're gonna go put in the seats. Uh, we're gonna put together the axle, and we're gonna put the stove in. Now the stove. I'm going to do after the seats and you're going to see why. So let me go and get these seats right here put in. It'll be about one second. So they got the front seats on facing outwards, round part facing outwards. And they want to sit pretty level as well. It's going to be a little harder on these because they're, because they're going to drift. See, mine are really doing it. They're going to drift the entire time they're drying. So you got to kind of babysit them until they're fully dry. Again, make sure each piece is fully dry before you go in. And start doing other pieces, or else things are going to move and drift. And why is my camera on? Stop that, stupid phone. And I, but make sure they're each piece is completely dry, including these, because these are going to want to kind of tilt either way too, because you're trying to put pressure on these. So make sure these are completely dry before you put on the seats. One more minute, I'll be back in a second. All right, so I got my I got my seats as little as possible. You know. <laughs> They, they won't stop moving. There's only one contact point, but I'm just going to call that good. That, that, that's fair. It'll still hold. We put a model on or something. Now, the stove. I can see a lot of folks mistaking the stove and thinking, I'm just going just gonna to put it right there flush. Yeah, do not put it flush. And I'm going to tell you why. It makes it a good idea. You know, it, it, it gets against the wall and the flat surface, you know. But these slots right here are how the house portion fits on to the bottom. So if your stove is right here, it's blocking that port, you see. So don't do that. Bring it on back. All right. I, I believe the right place to put it, at least the way I put it, my other one, is right there. Now, you can test fit it, but I am pretty certain and confident that that's the right place to put it because the hole should line up. For, for, this hole here is for the stove, so it should line up right there. And I can see, You can kind of look down through the hole and see it. But... Let's go ahead and put that stove in place real quick. While I was test fitting, I put it on, and put it on with the uh, the glue for the for the uh, fire stove to be slightly wet. So if it needs to move one way or the other, it can. And why is this edge suddenly fighting me? Why are you fighting me, Edge? Edge, play along here, Edge. Come on, it can't be that way. And I believe that is the right place for that stove because even when putting on wet and putting on the front of the house, there was no movement. One way or the other. Now, before I go insane, make sure this edge is in the place I want it to be. For some reason, it's wanting to find me now. There we go. So there we go. That's the one way you can test to see if your stove pipes is in the right direction. You uh, put it on a little bit of wet with the glue. And you slowly put that top on, and you slowly lift it back up, and you'll see movement one way or the other. But as you can see, you're going to want that stove not on top of the hole. But just kind of right next to it. You use use that far corner of the wall as your measurement. And there, that makes your stove a lot easier, and it'll save you a lot of heartache when you go and you realize I gotta tear that stove out. And because you just glued it on to wood, it's gotta make a wood tear, all kinds of bad stuff. So be very careful while putting it in. Do it smart. So now we got these two pieces sorted out. We're gonna move on to the axle, the wheels, and that front steering axle. Now, if you do this correctly. The way I'm going to show you, you can still be able to move the spokes back and forth. So, here we go. You're going to glue this one in place. I'll put a small edge of glue here. Small bit of glue here on the top part of the bottom part of the T there. Top part of the bottom part. That sounds dumb, but pretend I'm saying, but just, just, just pretend I, you, you know what I'm saying. It's going to look like that. Then you're going to do another spot of glue on the bottom side of that and the bottom side of that. 
smaller circle with a slot, and you're going to put that on underneath the big circle. Make sure they're good and sandwiched. Now, this will completely dry, and it has to completely dry, or else that part right here cannot rotate. So, make sure the big circle, the little circle, and the T are completely dry before you move on. So I'm going to set this down, let this sucker completely dry, and then we'll move on to the axle right here. Now, believe it or not, I've actually let an entire hour pass. I can tell you, the dirty thing is completely and fully dry. No glue anywhere else. One solid piece. Now, you're going to take your uh, kind of this, this this apparatus here that controls these, these things right here. You're going to place it on top of, of, of the uh, small wheel. That's going to allow you to be able to rotate these back and forth if if you want to. You can't just go glue them on there, call it a day. Qu you're quick and over. You're quick over and done with. Nothing to worry about. But I want these to move because I like having that ability to move them around because I'm just that kind of person. So, I'm going to put the the brown bit not this pale bit on top and oop, it's going to try and fall off because it's a very small radius there and then you got to take this piece and attach it to here as well and again if you want these things to move you got to be very careful when you do that because if you're not careful you can get some of your glue on this part right here we want you want the glue to simply only touch if any touch the small wheel so I want to take my time, just as you should take your time, and get this wheel on top of this uh, small wheel right here. So I got it on there. I got the glue. I applied glue very lightly with with one of these toothpicks here. By the way, if you don't have a big thing of toothpicks in your gear set, you need one. Now, as this is drying, I'm very slowly rotating the spoke here to make sure no glue's gotten on it. If glue has gotten on it, you will know immediately because it's going to try and stick and bind up. So as the contacts are drying on the big wheel, the little spoke here, or the I guess you want to call it a pillar, this part here, the long part, and the small bit underneath. You want to keep rotating them back and forth and make sure no glue has gotten on um, your spokes here. What, what's this called? Spokes? I'm not sure what they're called. Hold on. Okay, apparently they call this the pivoting axle, which sounds completely logical. <laughs> An axle that pivots. But alright, now we're going to keep. Flick this around and make sure that big wheel's dry, and then we'll move on to attaching the wheels and everything else that requires putting on the uh, bottom part of the bow top gypsy caravan. And so, because we were patient, because we took our time and applied the glue correctly, the big wheel is not coming off with a little bit of tuggage, and this is able to spin freely. So now you have a free spinning, free pivoting, pivoting axle, as so named. <laughs> <laughs> by a of precision and then a little book here. That's how you do that. So now we're going to attach both our axles, both the uh, regular axle and the pivoting axle. The pivoting axle will go on the side towards the seats. So it's going to be going like that. Don't put it towards the rear. Or it's just going to look a little funny because then your horse is going to be pulling it backwards, I guess. You can do that if you want to, but going by the schematic and going by regular logic, you're going to want the pivoting part towards the front. So we're going to do that right now. For the front part, the box that has the edge on it is going to go towards the front. It's going to go up right under there. And wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And because I wasn't taking enough time, I just realized when I put this front axle on, I forgot a part. <laughs> oh no. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put on the rear axle at least. I'm going to try and troubleshoot that front part. I'm sure someone else is going to do it. It takes one one small slip. <laughs> You're going to mess up a part. All right, I'll be right back. So, I want to remedy my mistake. I went ahead and I went, took a micro saw, and I sawed the top of this board. Now, again, this is the re just to reiterate to you guys, take your time. Remember, it's a model. Don't get angry at yourself. Don't get frustrated. There's always a workaround. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to glue this down where it should be, and then glue this on top. Back with you in a second. Well, after I saw this off, went up and got, went to do, uh, get some dinner, <laughs> whatever thing. And as you all know, life doesn't always go to plan, does it? Well, I sat down, went to go pick it up, I sneezed, and I bent this little arm right here. You hate to see it, but you're a smart guy, or a girl, and you saved your rectangles, didn't you, from the beginning of the video. What we're going to do is, a simple fix, take this rectangle, glue it 
right along the square right here, reinforce it. Like I said, never feel defeated by setbacks or breakages. There's always a way to fix it. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then we're going to put um, this on top of this one right here. And it should all be back how it should be, all while maintaining the movable pivot point. So give me one second. I'm going to do all this real quick. <laughs> we'll get back to it. This has been quite a journey <laughs> for me, but we were able to fix our mistake. All mistakes can be fixed. Never overstress about the small mistakes you may make. Even someone like me who's been doing these models for years upon years upon years can still make mistakes. The important part is knowing how to fix them and keeping your heads cool while you're under fire and all that fun stuff. But we're able to do it and it's still still free turning. We got the base plate that connects this the the that connects the, this piece that connects the axle to the actual frame of the vehicle or wagon and this little running board place is now back in place as well. So now we it should be able to finally <laughs> And go on as it was designed underneath just like this so glue that on real quick this has certainly been a fun build hasn't it <laughs> well when I went ahead and glued on the axles I went ahead and glued on the wheels as well as you can see the front wheels do turn and you can just you can only tell that this thing has a repair to it by flipping it over only you can tell and even though we had to cut that off and reapply it you can only just barely tell when the light hits it right so but the more the fact is the model was repaired and now looks complete so that's what the real main goal here was despite having a little bit of a hiccup everything came out fine in the end it was the main goal the main goal is not to freak out you know now with this part right here it's these two spokes it's just it's it's, it's mostly I, I don't want to glue it on I hold it on just 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 by by tension I'm gonna put tension on the uh, non repaired side so it's gonna look like that for a second and just give it a soft little squeeze and pops right on like that so and we don't have it glued on it's able to move back and forth so this is a little more more freedom to hook it onto an actual animal or whatever you want to model wise and then you combine that with this and this moving you know you get a lot more action to it it's going to look better you can kind of park it like that or you can park it like that you know you can move it however you want to which adds a little more freedom to the model i think it makes it look better in the end and now while and of course while i was letting um wait for all the stuff to to to, uh, to uh, dry up and all that i went and put, and went and put the uh, stairs together as well as well the stairs is simple. Do either the top or the bottom stair first. Get it both put on there, and then it's really good to slot these things on there one at a time. It's gonna look something like that. And with these, these hooks are gonna hook onto the back, uh, or not the back, with the front right here. And then the toolbox is simple. It's gonna look like that on the end. You have your, your, your it's kind of like Tetris. You got a nice L shape here. You got a long L shape and a short L shape. This is the short towards the body and the long towards the butt. And then this just kind of hooks right on there in a little T shape. So it's gonna pop on the stairs. And after the stairs are set, they'll hang on just like that from the front. Stands out a little bit of ways. And the reason why I like leaving these things both turnable and uh, movable, both up and down side to side, is that way you can kind of you can still kind of get a little bit of leeway here and here. And say so you want, still want to put on an animal or whatnot, or just leave them up like they're in stowage, or leave them down. You know, you can still move them around a little bit if you want to. Now, if, if you wanted to have the stairs not there, you simply just uh, don't put them on. But I want mine on, believe it or not. Even though this, these, these are these are movable, I I did that just because I like to have them movable. And even then, I can still move them back and forth underneath. But because I have characters standing on this, uh, coming out from the Vardo, I want the stairs on there. So. But say you don't want the stairs on there, you can actually take, what you do is, you take the stairs, leave them as, as, as an on and off piece, and put them inside on the bottom here. And then when you um, put the top on, you know, you, 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 you would never know the stairs inside there. So you, say you get to your gaming table, and like, I want the stairs out today. Pull the top off, pull the stairs out, slide them on, top back on. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like a built-in storage space. 
But since I want the stairs out, I'm going to call it good here. I'm going to put the top back on. Very carefully put the stove pipe up through the hole in the roof. Set it in its slots. And then you have your Bardo. Or in this case, the uh, Bow Top Gypsy Caravan from Sarissa. And like I said, we did have a lot. We had a, two hiccups. I only had two, hook, two, two, two hiccups on, on this particular project. One, I uh, forgot a piece <laughs> on the axle. And then the small arm here broke. But because you listened to what I said and told you to keep your small pieces, you're able to fix the rather fragile piece here. See how that sprung up like that? And because you are patient, you were able to cut the piece off, put the right piece on, and then glue that, uh, the, the other piece on top of that. So that way you're able to keep the entire integrity of the model the look of the model and everything is there's no wizzy big stuff going on here so it's gonna be the, the rear when you look at it and to, to the side and then to the front and then to the other side all in all I did a lot better on this one than I thought I would this big round thing really freaked me out because when I first did the uh, the, the, the the ledge top I was like man that was hard <laughs> I try to work with this then I realized I bought a bow top. I can guarantee it's going to be the same, and it's same exact material, and it was. But Sarissa does a good job um, designing the, their carts and giving nice little instructions and the pictures. Those do help. But what I want to do is I want to show you how easy it is to put together, but how, also how easy it is to figure it apart. And that's with any, any, you know, with any model. And there are tools you can find or that come from the actual model itself that can help you fix those problems. And why it's very smart to have a very cool mind while you're doing models. You know, you don't want to panic or go ah, and you break it or something like that. You know, that's one of the things you you you, you want to avoid doing. And I just realized, looking at it, I glued this <laughs> the, the wrong side in. So we can get this off here. Aha! <laughs> it's a small detail, so I get you with any model. Small details. But where I make mistakes, I also learn. Unfortunately, I learned on the easiest model they got. That hearse is super easy compared to this. Super easy compared to this. It's all flat. There we go. Now that wheel's the right way. But I think as long as you guys heed my warnings and learn from my mistakes, <laughs> and, I, and I knew I was, I, you should be able to go forward just fine without fear. And Sarissa, I do love y'all's products. I'll be ordering more of these for my daughter here in a bit. And she, I'm sure she's going to love them because she likes doing models as well. And I'm probably going to get a few more of these just for conversions. Neat little things there. Also, as well, um, if you're ever in the market for it for, uh, for for bases, they do do 20mm uh, bases, 50mm uh, uh, bases. It's all in, you choose your own thickness. They got super thick, super thin. And they also do custom bases as well. So if you ever need any bases, be sure to visit, visit them. This is just right here. SwissPrecision.com. And when you get there, you can find all kinds of fun stuff. Like I got their website up right now. And they got things for World War Europe, Japan, the Industrial Revolution. They got Market Garden, North Africa, Colonial, Railways, Retro. System sci-fi and all kinds of stuff you can use, and they also have buildings as well. And like uh, this huge building right here, the upper upper rank shops is only 25 euros, and that's pretty darn good just for a terrain building. I mean, that's not that's, that's not that's not a price you can't really ignore because they're really well priced, and just, you can't really beat it. I mean, if you want nice, affordable, cheap, portable terrain this is the place to go get it and they don't only have square bases they got infantry trays they got cavalry trays conversion trays oval bases hexagonal bases octagonal bases they got all kinds so i hope you guys enjoy the video hope you all enjoyed watching me make mistakes and figure out how to fix them and i hope you all uh will see me next time i do another one one of their uh their carts as well as some other stuff and be sure to stop by source of precision and see what they got that you can use whether it's from terrain carts or even just bases for your models now i'm gonna be coming back here in a little while with some mere miniatures uh and i got a few of those i gotta do and i still have uh, fireforge calvary inbound from their shop a little late due to the snowstorm but we'll be seeing them here soon hope you guys have a good day